breaking news. I was watching the news on TV when the screen suddenly changed. No way! It was a case of holdout. The scene being broadcast from the helicopter was my husband's office. I rushed to call his cell phone. Are you okay? Are you safe? What do you mean? I'm working right now. What? Are you with a suspect? Huh? My name is Heather. I'm a researcher at the scientific manufacturer. I've been married to my husband Dale for six months. We met at a house party hosted by my boss. I was brought up by a kind of parent who was very devoted to education since I was a young child. I love studying. After high school, I enrolled in a university with strong science programs and devoted myself to research until graduate school. I would clarify the unknowns and problems and approach them in various ways. I enjoy the process of searching for answers based on records and results. That alone made me feel fulfilled in life. Research was my life for six years in school. Although my grades were good, I was far from being fashionable or having a colorful love life. I told Pam, my boss at work, she told me to broaden my horizon by getting involved in things other than research. Hence, a party was organized. To be honest, I was not at all enthusiastic at first. I had been to a house party once when I was a student at the request of a colleague at my part-time job. It turned out to be a horrible experience for me. I only remember that I was teased and called a nerd or geek just because I was a science major. In fact, I neither knew how to act at a party nor flirt with boys. When I think back now, I wish I had been a little more experienced, but that didn't change the fact that I was hard. That was why I was reluctant to attend the party Pam was throwing. She was someone I respected a lot, so I didn't dare to refuse her invitation at the time. She was a prominent employee at work and had the tremendous trust of her colleagues. She also had a lot of experience in relationships, and to me, she seems perfect as both a researcher and a woman. Thus, I decided to attend the party. There were many guys from up-and-coming venture companies there. Dale was one of them. I wasn't a naive student anymore, so I mingled and socialized unlike in the past. After having a conversation with a group of people for a while, Dale spoke to me privately. I immediately braced myself for the possibility of being hurt again, but my fears were unfounded. He listened to me intently, and instead of calling me nerdy, he praised me for devoting myself to one thing for a long time. It was the first time anyone had ever said such a thing to me, and I was instantly attracted to him. We went out for a few years and then got married. We were in our honeymoon period for about six months. Then his attitude began to change. When we first started living together, he was eager to help me with the chores and showered me with his love and appreciation. After a while, he stopped doing any of it. He worked so much over time and on weekends that we didn't even have quality time together. I understood that being a startup venture, he must have been quite busy. I also thought that men normally dislike doing chores, so I didn't mind so much about it. However, when he started coming home smelling of alcohol and a woman's perfume, I began to worry a little. One day, I couldn't bear the feelings of loneliness and anxiety about him cheating on me, so I asked him directly, Hum, you have been coming home late these days. I want to spend a little more time with you. You often come home smelling of alcohol and perfume, but you're not cheating on me, are you? He was changing his clothes from work and started yelling at me with a grimace. 
It's a very important time to build a relationship with my clients for the company's success right now. I've been taken to places I don't even want to go and forced to drink. This is a part of my job, but you accuse me of cheating while I'm working so hard. Have you lost your compassion after studying too much? You are an unfit wife. Shame on you. I didn't expect him to be so upset. I assumed he must have been under a lot of pressure, and my lack of consideration had made him angry. I regretted it and apologized repeatedly, but he became even colder than before. A while later, I was off work that day. Dale left for work early in the morning. I was folding the laundry while watching the news on TV when the anchorman reported breaking news. I stopped my hands and turned to the TV to see what was going on. I was stunned. A man had forced himself into Dell's office and was holding employee hostage. I couldn't believe such a threat fell upon my own husband. The camera caught a glimpse of the suspect yelling something at his hostages. Worried about Dell's safety, I immediately called his cell phone. The ringing continued several times. Then I heard his voice. Honey, where are you? Are you okay? There was a short pause. What do you mean? I'm working at the office. It couldn't have been possible. Right at the time, his company was being televised for a hold up case. I wondered if he was being told what to say by the suspect. I fearfully asked him, Is the suspect next to you right now? I heard him let out, huh? Like an idiot. It was only for a moment, and he immediately gathered himself. Oh, no, no. I'm working from a client's office. I'm okay. I just found out about it on the news. I'm sorry. I have to deal with it, so I gotta go. He hung up the phone. I sensed something strange. Even though he was at his client's office, I wondered if it was possible for him to find out later than I did. If he was in the middle of a meeting, it would have been impossible for him to take my call. If he was on the way back to his office, it was strange to say that he was working there. It was a major case of hold up with hostages. I decided to ask him about the strange circumstance. Although I might have gotten him upset again and watched how it unraveled on the TV, it was successfully solved without any casualties in the early morning. Just then, Dale came back home. When I was about to ask him what had happened, he suddenly pulled me into his arms. I love you, honey. If you hadn't called me, I would have been so freaked out that I might have gone mad. I'm really glad to have you. I too was almost losing my mind with anxiety as well. Although he was not at the scene, he must have been affected indirectly. He must have felt scared. I also want to apologize about the other day. I know I was a jerk to take it out on you. I said some terrible things, but I really care about you. After saying all that, he went to the kitchen and started to serve the food I had prepared. Take it easy today. I will take care of the housework for you. I wondered how long it had been since he showed any affection. He had never apologized about coming home drunk late, nor had he thanked me for anything I had done those days. It was the only time he helped me with the housework and appreciated me, but it was enough to make me happy. Before I knew it, I had forgotten about the strange feeling I felt when I called him. The next day, while I went about my business as usual at work, Pam came to talk to me. She was wondering if something good had happened to me as I looked happier. It was embarrassing that I had unconsciously shown it on my face. I told her everything that had happened the day before. When I finished, she looked skeptical. I wondered if I said something out of place. I had assumed that she would have been happy for me, contrary to my expectation. What came out of her mouth was something else. 
Are you sure you're okay with that? I didn't get what she meant by it. When I asked her, she explained apologetically. When a man suddenly becomes nice, it is usually when he has something to hide. Cheating, debt, or something. I was irritated to hear that. It's just that the man you dated in the past have been like that. Dell is different. He's probably just tired from work. She raised her eyebrows as if to say, uh huh, when I, normally a quiet person, countered her. I got even more irritated and lashed out at her. I met him thanks to you, but you don't know him like I do. Please don't meddle too much in my marriage. She mumbled, bright, and walked away with a sad face. After that day, she started taking more days off from work. I worried if it was my fault. A few days had passed since then, and I was aware that I went over the line. I wanted to apologize to her, but I didn't know how to bring it up, and was only able to have business like conversations with her. Just as I was thinking that I had to do something about it, she asked me out. She wanted to show me something. A few days later, Dell's indifferent attitude toward me was back in force, and I was feeling lonely again. Then we received a call from his parents asking us to visit them for an important talk. We drove to their house. Dell hadn't been sweet to me since the hold up incident. Our relationship had cooled off, and there was no conversation in the car. When we arrived, we were ushered into the living room and were told that my father in law was diagnosed with a progressive disease. He would soon need nursing care. It was impossible to do alone by my elderly mother in law, so she asked Dale to help as much as possible. He seems to be annoyed by her request. I'm pretty busy with work, so why don't we just leave everything to Heather? She doesn't seem to be doing much at work. I wouldn't mind if she stayed with you guys if needed. How heartless he sounded in front of his parents. Why, I was dumbfounded by his selfishness. My father in law opened his mouth. Well, it would be better to have more people helping us. But aren't you quite busy at work right now, Heather? I don't know all the details, but I heard that your company has made a breakthrough invention and the business is growing fast. You know about that, don't you? Dale glared at me. What my father in law said was true. It was a medical invention, so I supposed he must have come across it as he researched his own illness. What invention? I haven't heard of it yet. How come he knows about it and I don't? Hum, don't embarrass me in front of my parents. Although the volume of his voice was kept down in front of his parents, his tone was filled with anger. His big pride was hard. Yet, he did all kinds of things behind my back. Finding the perfect timing, I turned to him and spoke clearly. Why you didn't know? Because you're never home. You don't care about spending time with me. And you're cheating around. My in laws were absolutely mortified at the unexpected turn of events. Don't talk nonsense. Not only are you embarrassing me, but you are also making a stupid joke in front of my parents. It would have been much better if it had been just a stupid joke. Can you still justify your wrongdoing? I took out an envelope from my bag and spread its contents on the table. There were pictures of him going into motels with various women and of him making out with them in his car. Those were all taken by a private investigator. Pam was the reason why I decided to hire one. It turned out that she had been absent from work because she was following him by herself. As a result, she discovered him entering a motel with a woman other than me and filmed the moment with her phone. She showed it to me. 
It would be a lie if I said I didn't think what terrible news she brought upon me at that time. She told me that she was deeply suspicious of him, and that she didn't want to see me being deceived by him. If there was nothing suspicious, she would have told me everything and apologized, and at worst, she expected me to condemn her. Since I had seen irrefutable evidence, I could no longer escape from a reality. I decided to thoroughly investigate his affair and hired a professional investigator. According to the investigation, he was having multiple partners and even complained about me to them. My wife has no feminine charms. I married her thinking she could at least be a housekeeper, but all she can do is research. She doesn't know how to please a man at all. Compared to her, you are amazing. He badmouthed me. By the way, how did I know that? One of his partners was not serious about him and sold him for a little gift. His parents were so shocked that they were in tears. As soon as I mentioned the divorce and alimony, Wait, that's not true. He started to make excuses and pleaded with me to forgive him. I just gave in to temptations. You know, I had been drinking, so I wasn't thinking straight when they made a move on me. The only person I really love is you. You are smarter than me, so you can see that, right? What nonsense. He totally underestimated me. He must have been playing with many women like me by whispering sweet words to them. He enjoyed it enough, and it was time to pay the bill. I'm neither your housekeeper nor your servant. Go back to your amazing woman who knows how to please a man for your comfort. That is, if she's still interested in you. When I finished saying what I wanted to say, I left him behind with his parents. Later on, they were sacked after the embezzlement of his entertainment budget came to light. His mistresses were all bimbos, who were just after his money. Once he became a tight wallet, they all disappeared one by one. He moved back in with his parents after losing his job. They agreed to help him with some of the alimony on the condition that he worked at the nearby factory and looked after his father at night. Life at home must be unbearable for him, who used to work only for money, booze, and women. I apologized and thanked Pam. I had said terrible things, and thanks to her, I had found out about the affair. I was finally forced to face reality. I asked her why she went to such lengths to help me. You reminded me of myself in the past. You think I have a lot of experience, but of course, it wasn't always like that. I had fallen for a bad guy too. In my case, he didn't cheat on me, but he forced me to pay his debts. That's why I felt I had to help you somehow. Don't thank me because it's all about self-satisfaction in the end. I feel deeper respect and affection toward her now. Since then, she has taught me makeup and fashion. I'm trying to be more cautious about other things besides research. Don't mean to brag, but I think I look much better now. When I go out for drinks with Pam, it's not uncommon for me to get picked up. I see this as a good opportunity and training my eyes for a better man. Whether it is research or romance, broadening my perspective would lead to a better result.